When I started watching One Piece, in the beginning it felt really funny and adventurous. But as the story progressed, we got to see action-packed fights and some emotional or intense backstories. And looking at the backstories of some characters, it feels like, can anyone have a darker backstory than this? But Oda Sensei be like. Picture. So, friends, the backstory of Kuma that's unfolding is becoming darker and more tragic. This backstory is now taking an emotional and sorrowful turn. Our hero Kuma has faced so many difficulties that I can't even describe. And this chapter is also very dark. So if you haven't read this chapter, don't worry, I'm here for you. Without wasting any more time, let's get into the chapter. So, the title of the chapter is The Birth of Bonnie. So, this chapter will revolve around Ginny and Bonnie. We are again continuing with another reader request cover page which is featuring Brooke. In this cover page we can see something written on Brooke Pant, which is an apology message from Oda Sensei saying I couldn't finish drawing in time sorry. I hope so it is not related to his health issue. As we saw in the last chapter that Dragon got the message about Ginny being kidnapped. It's been two years since Ginny was kidnapped, but so far, Ginny hasn't been rescued. We see Revolutionary Army currently helping out two specific kingdoms. Tumi Kingdom in the South Blue and Goa Kingdom in East Blue. So based on Ivankov and Kuma clothing we can assume that it is the time during Grey Terminal incident happened where they helped many people from the fire, and at that time they even saved Sabo. However, in this situation, Ivankov is refusing because they are currently helping the injured people in Goa. Kuma insists that he will go. Ivankov warns Kuma not to be impulsive, mentioning that he's been acting recklessly since the day Ginny was kidnapped. After saying this Kuma send himself off to Tumi Kingdom to assist the rebels. But, friend as if you look at Kuma's face, there's more going on beneath the surface. It seems like Kuma is on a vendetta and is not happy about what happened to Ginny two years ago. We come to know that Ginny was kidnapped by Celestial Dragon. They took Ginny because they were attracted to her and make her bride. We've seen a similar situation before when Saint Charles saw a lady he liked and wanted to marry. Luckily, Zoro intervened and saved her. This scenario also appeared in the One Piece film Gold, where Tesoro and Stella were about to get together, but a celestial dragon took Stella away. We know that these celestial dragons are very cruel. They did the same thing to Boa Hancock and her sisters when they were young, and they wanted to do the same thing with them. However, Fisher Tiger came to the rescue and freed them from Mariewa, all on his own. But I have a question why didn't the Revolutionary Army rescue Ginny as they knew where she is? If Fisher Tiger could do it alone, what's the reason the Revolutionary Army didn't save her? Share your thoughts in the comments, do you think they lacked manpower or something else? We see Kuma land right on the battlefield. One guy is surprised by Kuma's appearance because he's so big. He wonders where Kuma came from and asks for his name. After joining the battlefield, Kuma changed the course of the battle, and with the help of the Revolutionary Army, they won the war after so many years of struggle. In the next scene, a Navy officer is reporting at the Marine base that the Revolutionary Army caught them off guard. It's been two years since Ginny was kidnapped. We see a ship sailing on the sea, and on board is Ginny with her child Bonnie, heading towards Sorbet Kingdom. She contacted the Revolutionary Army and informed them that she's on the surface now and the Celestial Dragon abandoned her due to a deadly disease she has. And she expressed her wish to see everyone, but this call would be her farewell. Kuma was shocked and asked Ginny what she meant. He wanted to know her location, assuring he could be there in an instant. And he was afraid he might never see Ginny again. Ginny was glad Kuma still cared for her, but she didn't want him to see her in such a bad condition, as she was on the brink of death. She asked Dragon and Ivankov to look after Kuma. Her final words to Kuma were that she loved him and would always do so. Unfortunately, Kuma couldn't hear her last words because he had already taken off to the church at Sorbet Kingdom, where she was. People were happy to see Kuma. Kuma asked the people if Ginny was there, making sure she was around. One person explained to Kuma what had happened, saying that Ginny's face and entire body turned blue when she was exposed to sunlight, and her skin hardened like stone. And it didn't happen because of the contact with sunlight for a little while, as Ginny had come from a very long journey, and she came in contact with sunlight directly so that she could leave her daughter Bonnie in a safe place. The next scene is very emotional, we see Kuma holding Ginny's dead body in his hand, and we see tear in his eyes, and reminiscing about all the moments he shared with her. Kuma promises Ginny that he will take good care of Bonnie. Ginny was not Kuma's daughter, but Kuma treated her like his own daughter and never let his love be any less for her. The relationship between Kuma and Bonnie was quite lovely from childhood. When Bonnie was little, it was initially challenging for Kuma, and it's obvious that Kuma had never raised a child before, so he didn't know how to take care of and feed young children. The elders in the village guided Kuma on how to take care of Bonnie. They even advised Kuma that when he sleeps with Bonnie, make sure to lock her in an iron cage. And we see Kuma doing just that, sleeping with Bonnie locked in an iron cage beside him. 
Bonnie was cute like Ginny and had a gluttonous appetite like her. When Bonnie first called Kuma dad, it brought tears of joy to Kuma's eyes. In the following scenes, we see Bonnie gradually growing up, and Kuma spends a lot of time with her, playing, eating, and enjoying. Kuma also fights battles for the Revolutionary Army alongside taking care of Bonnie. Amidst all this, Kuma was having good days, but once again, another challenge was about to knock on Kuma's life. Kuma's story is like the character Jethal from the show Tarak made a Ka Ulta Chashma one difficulty goes away, and the next one is waiting at the door. From here, the story takes a dark turn because the disease Jenny had, the sapphire scale, also affects Bonnie. Due to this, Kuma seals the church everywhere to ensure that Bonnie doesn't come in contact with sunlight. Kuma didn't know about Bonnie's disease, and despite consulting many doctors, they couldn't identify the illness or suggest a cure. Kuma plans to leave the Revolutionary Army and decides to stay with Bonnie. Dragon agrees and suggests using their contacts to find doctors worldwide for Bonnie. It's been five years since this happened, and Bonnie is now five years old. Some kids used to tease Bonnie by calling her a vampire because she couldn't go outside the church. Despite this, Bonnie handled their teasing quite well. As she was going to go outside the church to deal with them effectively, Kuma came and stopped her. But Bonnie feels sad because the kids used to tease her by calling her a vampire, and they would mock her for having stones on her face, calling her ugly. Kuma comforts her by saying that the stones on her face are like jewels, and that's why in present time they call Bonnie as Jewelry Bonnie. In the next scene, Kuma asks Bonnie where she would like to go. Bonnie expresses her desire to visit Sky Island, which is quite close to the sun, hoping to find Nika, whom Kuma used to talk about. If you pay attention, you'll notice that the book Bonnie is reading is actually the same Bible Kuma used to carry. Here, Kuma and Bonnie discuss their plans to visit Sky Island on Bonnie's 20th birthday and Fishman Island on her 19th birthday. After that, in the next scene, Kuma meets a doctor who informs him about Bonnie's illness. The doctor explains that the disease called Sapphire Scale cannot be cured, and even if Bonnie is kept hidden from sunlight and moonlight, she won't live for more than five years. In other words, if Bonnie reaches the age of 10, she will die. Bonnie hears the conversation between the doctor and Kuma, but she misunderstands and believes that she will be fine when she turns 10. Kuma tries to explain her, but she doesn't fully understand. Kuma insists that she will be fine when she turns 10. Speaking about the present, Bonnie seems to be fine because there are no stones on her face, and her current age is 12 years, as Vegapunk refers to her as a child. In the next scene, it is revealed that the former king of Sorbet Kingdom, King Bakori, has returned. He is causing distress by mistreating people, killing some, and attempting to divide the kingdom. The citizens, in tears, seek help from Kuma. After hearing this we can see Kuma furious face. And with this, the chapter comes to an end. So, with this I end this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If do so then don't forget to give video a thumbs up and if you new to the channel don't forget to subscribe.